Good day everyone, I am Mara Flor Payawal from BS Ed Mathematics Qualifying and I am here to discuss, to present or report the birth of set theory and the problem in the foundation of mathematics topic. So, let's have first our intended learning outcomes. Discuss the problems in the foundations of mathematics. So in this lesson, I am going to discuss about the history or the birth of set theory and what are the problems or challenges the founder have encountered. Set theory. So the history of set theory is rather different from the history of most other areas of mathematics. For most areas, a long process can usually be traced in which ideas evolve until an ultimate flash of inspiration, often by a number of mathematicians almost simultaneously, produces a discovery of major importance. Mathematical topics typically emerge and evolve through interactions among many researchers. Set theory, however, was founded by a single paper in 1874, or meaning a single person. And it is George Cantor. So George Cantor was a Russian-born mathematician who can be considered as the founder of set theory and introduced the concept of infinite numbers with his discovery of cardinal numbers. He first encountered sets while working on problems in trigonometric series. He also states there that studying sets help us categorize information. It allows us to make sense of a large amount of information by breaking it down into smaller groups. Set theory, however, is rather different. It is a creation of one person. So unlike with the other theory or other study of mathematics, it was founded by the different mathematicians. But for set theory, it is the creation of one person, George Cantor. So before we take up the main story of Cantor's development of the theory, we first examine some early contributions. So the idea of infinity had been the subject of deep thought from the time of the Greeks. So we have here Zeno of Elea, 450 BC or 450 before Christ. So who is this Zeno of Elea? Very little is known of the life of Zeno of Elea. We, sit, we certainly know that he was a philosopher, and he is said to have been the son of Teleutagoras. He was a Greek philosopher, famous for posing so-called paradoxes, which challenged mathematicians' view of the real world for many centuries. Aside from Zeno of Elea, we also have here... Bernard Bolzano. He successfully freed calculus from the concept of the infinitesimal and he also gave examples of one-to-one -one correspondences between the elements of an infinite set and the elements of a proper subset. He also defended the concept of an infinite set. At this time, many believed that infinite sets could not exist. So it was with Cantor's work, however, that set theory came to be put on a proper mathematical basis. Cantor's early work was in number theory, and he published a number of articles on this topic between 1867 and 1871. These, although of high quality, give no indication that they were written by a man about to change the whole course of mathematics. Year 1872. So what do you think happened in the year 1872? It is called the major event. So what do you think is the major event or the major happening in the year 1872? So an event 
of major importance occurred in 1872 when Cantor made a trip to Switzerland. There, Cantor met Richard Dedekind and a friendship grew up that was to last for many years. Numerous letters between the two in the years 1873 to 1879 are preserved and although this discussed relatively little mathematics, it is clear that Dedekind's deep abstract logical way of thinking was a major influence on Cantor as his ideas developed. So in the year 1872, Cantor met Richard Dedekind. So this is Julius Wilhelm Richard Dedekind. His major contribution was a redefinition of irrational numbers in terms of Dedekind cuts. He also introduced the notion of an ideal in ring, ring theory. And he is also a mathematician at Brunswick Technical Institute. So same with Cantor, he is also a mathematician. So the two met and their friendship grew up and lasted for many, many years. And since they are um, the same, they are mathematician, then their minds are in a deep abstract logical way of thinking. And that is one way to influence Cantor more and develop his ideas about the set theory. Cantor moved from number theory to papers on trigonometric series. These papers contain Cantor's first ideas on set theory and also important results on irrational numbers. Didi Kind was working independently on irrational numbers and published continuity and irrational numbers. An important exchange of letters with Richard Dedekind, mathematician at the Brunswick Technical Institute, who was his lifelong friend and a colleague, marked the beginning of Cantor's ideas on the theory of sets. They both agreed that a set is whether finite or infinite. It is a collection of objects that share a particular property while each object retains its own individuality. Year 1874. So again, what do you think happened in this year? So the previous information was all about the year 1872 to 1873 uh, events or happenings. How about in this year 1874? In year 1874, it is the birth of set. Theory. In 1874, Cantor published an article in Krill's journal. So who is this Krill's journal or Krill? So this is Krill or August Krill. He was a German mathematician who founded an important mathematical journal. He founded a journal devoted entirely to mathematics. Creel was very much in control of the journal and he acted as editor-in-chief for the first 52 volumes. So he is an editor of a journal or maybe a book that the contents are all about mathematics. And Contour wants to publish an article into that book, into that Creel's journal. A follow-up paper was submitted by Cantor to Creel's journal in 1878, but already Seth Urey was becoming the center of controversy. And there, aside from Cantor, there are also other young mathematicians that had their first that had their first books published in Creel's journal, largely due to his genius in spotting the importance of their research. So that's why 
uh, many mathematicians wants to publish their works in Creel's journal because he is a genius in spotting the importance of their research. So those mathematicians such as Abel, uh, Derech Litt or Derek Litt, Assistantin, Grassman, Hesse, Jacobi, Comer, Lobachevsky, Mobius, Plocker, Von Stott, Stanier, and Wurstras all had their early works made famous by publication in Grail's journal. Again, there was a follow-up paper that submitted by Cantor to Creel's journal in 1878, but already set theory was becoming the center of controversy. Why do you think that there was a controversy when Cantor wants to publish an article in Creel's journal? So we have here Cantor's paper in which he first put forward these results was refused for publication. So this time, uh, this is the meaning of the controversy. The article that Cantor's sent to Krell's journal was refused for publication by one of its referees. So if we say referees, in other term, it is uh, edit an editorial staff. So he is a person, or a person working of working for August Krell, and this person is Kroniker, who henceforth vehemently opposed his work. So this one, this is Kroniker, who was on the editorial staff of Krill's journal. So, he is also a mathematician and primary contributions were in the theory of equations. He made major contributions in elliptic functions and the theory of algebraic numbers. Kronecker was unhappy about the revolutionary new ideas contained in Cantor's paper. So that's why he blocked, he blocked or he didn't publish the article that Cantor gave to the Creel's journal because he was unhappy about the revolutionary new ideas contained in Cantor's paper. And because of that, Cantor was tempted to withdraw the paper, but his friend, his lifelong friend, Dedekind, persuaded Cantor not to withdraw, not to withdraw it. So not just Dedekind, also another mathematician, which is Wurstras. He also supported the publication. So, however, it was published at last in 1874. So, the set theory or the birth of set theory was published at last in 1874. Entitled on a characteristic property of all real algebraic numbers. The paper was published but Cantor never submitted any further work to Creel's journal. Cantor, however, continued his, with his work. His fifth work in the sixth part Triatis was published in 1883 and discusses well-ordered sets. He also cites many previous authors who had given opinions on the concept of infinity. Okay, this one. Cantor published a six part of the Triaritist theory from the years 1879 to 1884 because six years was the set theory in making. This work appears in Mathematische Annalen and it was a brave move by the editor to publish the work despite a growing opposition to Cantor's ideas. 
the leading figure in the opposition was Kronecker, who was an extremely influential figure in the world of mathematics. So, again, Cantor cites many previous authors who had given opinions on the concept of infinity, including Aristotle, uh, René Descartes, George Berkeley, René Descartes, and Gottfried Leibniz. Next, 1884. So that is 10 years after the birth of set theory or the set of theory published. So what do you think happened in this year, 1884? It is the crisis for Cantor. So what do you think is the type of crisis Cantor uh, encountered in this year? So in this year of mental crisis, Cantor seemed to lose confidence in his own work and applied to lecture on philosophy rather than on mathematics. He wants to apply to be a professor to lecture but not on mathematics but instead on philosophy. So the crisis did not last too long and by early 1885, Cantor was recovered and his faith in his own work had returned. Okay, again, from 1884, he was unhappy with his position at Hale as a lecturer or a professor and would have liked to move to Berlin. However, this move was blocked by Squars and Kronecker. In 1884, Cantor wrote 52 letters to Mittag Leffler. So each one of which attack Kronecker. But the crisis did not last too long and by early 1885, Cantor was recovered and his faith in the years after 1884, there is some indication that he never quit Quiet reached the heights of genius that his remarkable papers showed over the 10-year period from 1874 to 1884. So the crisis that Cantor have encountered was the mental crisis. It could be that Cantor was... Uh, seemed to lose confidence in, in his own work. He don't want to pursue his own work, but instead he chose to be a lecturer. But in the early 1885, he also recovered and his faith in his own work had returned. But again, it is... Uh, not or never quite reached the heights of genius that his remarkable papers showed over the 10-year period from 1874 to 1884. So meaning, there is a huge difference over the 10 years. And that ends my presentation and thank you for listening. Have a good day everyone.